you doing the slut thing again. Well, at least I know what real love feels like. You out here mourning a soul tie with a nigga that's been dragging you for years. And I'm the one with the issue. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Twisted Life of TV. I am Poetry. You are here for a recap and review of our web series, Soul Ties. All right. This is um, season one, episode six. We only have one more episode left to go. I know I have not been on it like I was supposed to be. Things happen and then things stop happening. And then I stop happening. You know what I'm saying? But I'm back. Um, I watched this episode probably about two or three weeks ago. And it got under my skin. So I was hoping that when I watched it again the other day that I'll be over whatever I was going through because I was in my own mental space and it didn't. <laughs> it didn't get up. It still got under my skin just as much as it did the first time. Um, <sighs> Carrie mama got on my damn nerves. <laughs> Carrie got on my damn nerves. And even though I feel that Shauna is being a hoe, in this current situation, I was siding more with Shonda than anything in this particular episode. So after the last incident where the ladies had the bum rush Matthew on the street because they saw that Bridget had been getting beat up. Um, they are now all heading over to Carrie's mama house. Carrie and them went over there saying that they are going with the intent to find out what a soul tie is all about. You know, um, they all interested on hearing what exactly is a soul tie, right? So, Mama Joyce, I hate to call her Mama Joyce because I can't stand Candy Burris' mama, Mama Joyce. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Mama Joyce, um, I'm just going to call her Mama, y'all, for real. She, uh, you know, say in order for y'all to get this info, to get this advice, you know, get this wisdom dropped on y'all, y'all need to help me out in this garden, right? And I'm like Bridget. I'm a city girl. I'm a, she said she's a corporate girl. We don't get dirty. We don't get our hands in the mud. She said, you don't get your hands in the dirt today. Get on down here. Because we finna get in your dirt. That's what we're about to do. So, uh, she believes that, like that garden, a soul tie needs to be nurtured. And sometimes, no matter how much love and light you give it, it's still going to wither away. It still ain't going to do what you want it to do. And, you know, Shauna said, oh, it's about time to let this thing go then, right? She's like, yes, it's time to let it go. And that's what I have been trying to tell you, Carrie. I was like, oh, she's starting just like that. Just like jump right onto it like that. Ain't no soft blow. And I was like, oh, I'd have felt some kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm here to talk about soul ties and you trying to check me. <laughs> anyway, she kept saying with all this wisdom that she has been giving Carrie throughout her life, she still brings home a withering ass, no good dude. She don't understand it. She turns to Carrie and says, you know, you can't fix that man, child. I didn't understand, though. Um, well, and she said she, she she didn't understand either. She didn't understand why Carrie keeps doing the things that she's doing. Like I said back in the first episode, the way that Carrie explained her parents' relationship, it was all butterflies and rainbows, child. Carrie had never witnessed conflict resolution. She never witnessed somebody doing something that the other person doesn't appreciate and how to address that, you know? She didn't have that type of upbringing. Um, but her parent, her mama said, Carrie's an empath and she likes to fix things that are broken, even if it means breaking herself. That is not what an empath is. <laughs> That's not what an empath is. Maybe she meant you're an empath and you like to fix things. Because an empath ain't, ain't necessarily somebody that's trying to fix somebody else. They just feel what everybody else feels. They sense energy real strong. That's what an empath is. And I, I, I wake up today and I'm feeling something and I'm like, I think something's off. And I called the person that I was thinking about and something's off. That's the empath. I walk into the room and I can sense there's tension. And ain't nobody said nothing. Ain't nobody looked my way. I can sense stuff. I pick up energy and I feel what others are feeling. That's an empath. So maybe she meant an empath and she likes to fix things. Now, 
based off of what we've seen, again, this is a short web series and we haven't got the full history of Carrie and Bryce, but based off of what I've seen or what they showed us, I don't see what Carrie's trying to fix Bryce. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't see what she's trying to fix him. What I see is that she trusts and believes in him over her own intuition. And again, that's not an empath. <laughs> but she trusts and believes in Bryce. Like he going to do right one day. He going to come around one day. He say he love me. I mean, of course, look at me. Look who I who, look at who I am to him. He can't do nothing but love me. So one day he going to act right. That's what I see, Carrie. I don't see her trying to fix Bryce. She honestly ain't even made excuses for him for real. She just overlooks his past actions. She talks about him and then she easily lets it go and say, okay, I'm going to give him another chance again. That ain't trying to fix that man. But anyway, Shauna do say that is you and Bryce to a T. So like I said, it's something that we haven't seen with her and Bryce, the fixing part, because I haven't seen it at all. Um, we now go over to Bridget. The last time we did a video, um, Home Stress TV came on and, and explained that we would understand Bridget's story this particular episode. And from what I was saying, remember I had all kind of like thoughts about what was going on with Bridget. And one of them, I said that she was having a PTSD moment. It was probably some type of traumatic experience. He was probably not there or he probably was there and didn't do anything. That's exactly what it was. She was sexually assaulted. They were both jumped pretty much and held at gunpoint and she was sexually assaulted in the process right she feels that he should have did something you know the guys that assaulted them said that she was feisty which you know when you say somebody's feisty feisty they either got a lot of mouth or they got a lot of pushback something like that she was but matthew wasn't matthew was standing there whimpering matthew had a fucking gun to his head Okay, while they held you down, he had a gun to his head. And she understands that. She notices that. She recognizes that. But she still wanted him to do something. What, that? For you? Y'all ain't married. He ain't your daddy. You ain't, he ain't your son. Why would he put his life on the line for you? Putting my life on the line for you is not a requirement. Or a skill set that a boyfriend should take on. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Are they supposed to be married? Even if they are married. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. So what you do was you want him to die? You just want him to die. If he'd have died, he'd have did something and he got killed. Then you'd feel better about yourself. Either way it goes. She feel like, you know, seeing what he did and did not do in that particular situation. She lost respect for him as a man. She's angry with him. She has every right to be angry. And Joy said the same thing. You could be angry, but he angry too. Think about what that did to his manhood and to his spirit. Okay? He has the right to be angry too. She ain't got the right to be angry at Matthew. But the way that she explained that story, you knew she was still hurt. You knew she was because she was still going on and talking about... Um, we went out late that night. I was tired. I really wanted to go home. And then he talked me into staying out longer. We cut through the alley, going down this dark path. And I said, no, we should go back the other way. He convinced me it was going to be okay. He convinced me that we would be safe. And we weren't. He was adamant. Basically, she's saying, I shouldn't have listened to him. I should not have ever put my trust in him. Because, and by me putting my trust in him, I was hurt. I was attacked. Sweetheart, you still got your own mind, okay? You may have put your trust in him, but the fact that somebody jumped out and attacked you ain't Matthew's fault, okay? It's not Matthew's fault. That's like saying somebody wearing a short skirt to a ball full of men and she gets raped, that it was her fucking fault. She should have known better. She should have put a longer skirt on or something like that. No, that's exactly what you sound like, Bridget. That's exactly what you say I'm like. If we hadn't went down that dark alley, I'd have been okay. You know what I'm saying? If he just did something, I would have been okay. No. He probably been dead and you still put up with got a sexually assaulted or raped or whatever happened to you in that particular instance. However, it still does not make it clear to me why you are putting your hands on that man. Why that man is putting his hands on you. 
that whole explanation, I was expecting something more. I was expecting something more. That entire explanation, she basically sat down and said, I walked through the valley of death, you know what I'm saying, with Matthew. He let go of my hand and I got hurt physically. It does not explain why you snap out on him. It does not explain that at all. That that situation, that traumatic experience does not explain why you are now physically violent towards him. Is it because you think he's less than a man? So because you think he's less than a man, you're going to beat him like a bitch? Is that what's going on? Make me understand. I don't. I don't. I, I don't. I don't understand her justification for any of it. It makes no sense to me. Anywho. Okay. So. Um, I'm on a whole lot of pages and stuff like this, right? So, anywho, um, Shauna, after listening to those those situations, listening to her talk to Carrie and listening to Bridget explain why she the way she is with you know Matthew, she don't think she ever gonna trust him again. If she do, she just ain't ready to right now. Let the motherfucker go. Okay, Mama Joyce basically said they trauma bonding. You know what I'm saying? The way she was explaining it, I don't know if she meant that as a good thing. It sounded like she meant, baby, y'all holding on to each other because y'all experienced the same thing. Because she said the same thing I was saying. A lot of couples don't make it through that type of situation. And not a lot of times when a couple is out together and one of them is hurt and they are placing the blame on the other person, they don't stick together for no whole nother motherfucking year. That shit breaks apart. They, they 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 despise each other. They um look at each other less than like she doing. But the physical abuse that don't match to me. It don't match. Anywho, um, Shauna was like, you know, that's, that's some deep shit. I think it's time to go. All right, but Mama ain't done. She need to talk to Shauna too. You know, she manipulate her and is sitting down and having some milk and lemonade. She ain't make Bridget have no milk and lemonade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bridget was like, no, nah, okay, I'm fine. But she just wanted to get all up in Shauna business. Shauna let her. She told her what the heck happened to her and her dude, right? Because she said something. She opened up the conversation shady as fuck to me. And it already put me on notice as soon as she said it. Mm. That ring finger look a little bare today. Care to explain? No, I don't. That's how I would have been feeling. Like, no. I don't. But Shauna explained to her, you know, thank goodness we didn't get to hear the whole scenario all over again. And she tells Shauna that um, she is trying to find the perfect man. So that's why she's spreading herself out to all these other men. Um... And she said, you got a good man. He doing this, that, and the third for you. Even trying to buy you a house. And Shana was like, I didn't even know he was trying to buy me a house. She said, if, if you did know, would that have mattered? Shana said, yeah, it would matter. It would made a difference. Now, I don't believe her. <laughs> I think she probably would have still found another reason to creep out on him. And she probably been creeping out on him all along. This probably ain't nothing new. But cheating is a choice. If, if, if what she wanted from him was a house and now he's giving it to her, she know it, she she could have made a choice not to cheat. I don't believe, like I said, I don't believe that she wouldn't have, but it is a choice. People kill me when they fall into, you know, cheating situations. No, you chose to get into that situation. But I don't believe she's looking for a perfect partner. She's not looking for a perfect love. Um, and she was like, how would you know? You know, apparently Carrie been telling her mom everything. Now, let me tell you. My daughter tell me a lot, too. She don't tell me everything. She tell me a lot. But I am not going to sit here in her friend's face and pull out the dirt that my daughter done told me about them. That's not. That's wrong. It's two left shoes, right? But, no, Shana did ask her, how did you know? And she said, all your life, you've been bringing Tom, Dick, and Harry over to our crib. All your doggone life. They treat you real good, get you everything you want, and then you dump them and move on to the next. That is not the same as what she's doing right now. She said that Shauna is self-sabotaging herself. And she self and she's always self-sabotaged her relationships. If she got it so good with these people, 
What's she searching for? But she left them. That's the key point I wanted to make. She left them and moved on to another. She was basically getting her Lori Harvey on. That's what Shauna was doing. And she's been doing. It's different than what's going on right now. Because right now, she's not only shacked up. She's engaged to be married to this man. And she's cheating on him. That's not what she's done in the past. What she's done in the past is get her with somebody saying, oh my God, he the one, he the one, girl. He the one, he the one right? And they say, no, never mind. He ain't the one. He the one. So let me leave him alone and get to the next one. But that ain't what she's doing. She, right now, she, not, she messing with her man, people behind his back, and messing with every other dude on the corner too. And from what we've seen, they wasn't giving her something. Well, they was giving her something she could feel. And that was it. Giving me something you can feel. That's all they was giving her. All they was giving her. Everything else she was getting from Carlos, unless you, unless Joyce was trying to say, you want what Carlos was giving you and what they was giving you. That's all they were giving her was the dick. She had three different people giving her the dick. That's it. She didn't have no butcher, no electrician, no doomy man, and then a boyfriend. They wasn't giving her different things. She had one that was giving her all her material things and one that was giving her the dick. Or three that was giving her the dick. She had three of them. She was messing around three different people. They might have been giving her the disease. Okay. And she was trying to tell her that, you know, she up her busting it wide open for all these different men and she uh, exchanging all this energy. I can't remember exactly how it went or somebody explained to me before. You know, women are normally the receivers and men on the the givers and when they ejaculate they're giving a part of you which is why you're supposed to be married to every man that you have ever had sex with because they have released themselves into you and their energy doesn't go anywhere it doesn't die um i remember i think i don't know who i heard it probably heard probably heard it in church some dog where i don't know but still if she weren't condoms then they ain't, um <laughs> give her no types of energy but she don't like anywho i know energy so Thank you. You know, that's what she's saying. I know energy, so thank you, right? Um, I'm on another page. I'm just talking. I got notes and I'm just talking. Um, and she got up and started to leave. I'm back on this page. I'm back on this page. She said, uh, Shana said, you basically calling me a hoe. I mean, Shana. Currently, what you're doing is hoeing chick. That's what you're doing currently. Um, but she, like I said, but her relating it to all her past relationships, she calling her a hoe based on that. She said, no, you're not a hoe. You're a love addict. So she was like, what do you mean? I'm a, so I'm an addict now. Okay. Um, I don't see her as being maybe an addict for the dick, maybe. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, an uh, addict to material things. But she says a love addict. I, I just don't see her chasing love in any of these other people that she's sleeping with. But anyway, Carrie, she got up. She better got ready to leave. And Carrie's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You taking it the wrong way? You take the wrong way. She said, no, I'm not. Your mama is basically calling me a slut. Now, mama went into the house. Okay. <laughs> you know, because she said, you know, you, buck, you got her busting for all these different people. If it walk like a duck, if it talk like a duck, then you must be a slut. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Taking all this different nut, fucking up your pH up. That's what you're doing. <laughs> so um Joyce was, was offended she was hurt that Shauna didn't want to hear her or take in what she had to say um so she was like you know let's pray Shauna wasn't about praying so she's about to leave and like I said they telling her she overreacting look if I don't want to pray with you I don't want to pray with you okay and I'm damn sure I'm not going to pray, pray, pray with somebody I know is already passing judgment on me. Um, this is why I don't leave prayer up to everybody. I don't tell everybody we pray for me, y'all. I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Some people tell me they pray for me. And I usually, if you heard, if you notice, if you on this channel and you said pray for me, and you oh you said you was praying for me, if you didn't tell me a specific reason why you was praying for me, I don't say shit to you, do I? No, I don't accept your prayer. Actually, I blocked it. I'm letting you know that right now. Be specific when you pray for me. What the fuck are you praying for? What exactly are you praying for? You praying for my peace of mind? You praying for my well-being? You praying for healing over my family? Yeah, tell me some stuff like that. But I'm like, I'm praying for you, girl. No, you don't. Mm -mm, don't pray for me. Mm -mm. Your God and my God might not be the same people. 
Anyway, I think Shauna was wrong as fuck for calling Carrie Mama the great value of Yala Van Zandt. Oh my God. However, I did not disagree with her um, about why she was there or for what it happened, what what had happened to get her to that point. Um, she didn't ask for Carrie's mama judgment. She didn't even ask her for her opinion, nor interrogation. And she's like, you know, if your mama the all seeing and all knowing, why she can't fix you? Now that's how Carrie mama started off the day was saying, I don't understand why you like this. I give you all my advice and you still run around with your head tucked between your legs. I don't understand it myself. Her mom had already said it. So this was kind of redundant of Shauna to bring that back up saying, why your mama can't fix you? Okay. But that just, that, that, that ticked Carrie off. Right. Um, but Shauna tell her, look here, your mama here clocking my pussy. You clocking my pussy. Keep y'all opinions to yourself for real. Carrie like, so how is this my fault? Um, because you the one that set this whole thing up. You the one that brought us over here to have your mama tell us about our damn selves. That's pretty much what it was. And she like, she trying to help you. I didn't ask for her help. And sometimes when people try to help you, you accept the help that they're giving. But I clearly told your mother, this is not what I want to do right now. I'm ready to go. I appreciate you, but respectfully... I don't think you should speak on my situation. She told her that, okay? And your mother continued to pursue and press on the situation. So, yeah, she didn't ask her to be all up in her goddamn business. And Carrie say, somebody finally give your ass some attention. And this is how you act. Shauna been searching for attention? I didn't. I mean, from the other dudes, yeah. But that ain't equal, equal to the attention that your mama trying to give her. No, it's not the same. Somebody finally pay you attention and this how you act? What? I'm sorry. Mm -mm. That sounds like her mama is saying, your mama didn't care enough about you, so here I am. That's what it sounds like to me. Like, what you mean she finally gave me some attention? Then it got real ugly, y'all. Shauna saying, well, at least I know what it feels like to be in love, to have love. You are her chasing the soul tie of a nigga who ain't never loved you and been dragging you around for years. But I'm the one that got issues. Carrie, like, I ain't say that. Did I say that? Yes, Carrie, that is exactly what you're saying. That is, and you said it repeatedly in this conversation. If you don't think she got issues, then what the fuck is your mama helping her with? She only tried to help. Help her with what? If she ain't got no issues. Yes, you believe that she has issues, okay? And then Carrie, like, but you stay in other people's business. You stay in other people's business. Carrie, that's you. You the one brought all your friends over here so your mama could tell them about their fucking business. How is Shana in everybody's business? The biggest thing that I noticed, well, she looked out for you or she tried to give you advice in regards to Bryce. You didn't follow it. Okay. You didn't follow it. Um, when the whole situation went down with Bridget and Matthew, she was the first one to call like, hey, we got to help my sister out here. And what Carrie say? When Bryce drugged your ass before, I almost had you in the goddamn nut house. I was the one that was for you. Me. The unemployed one. The one without no job. The one without no goals or ambitions. I was that one, right? She tell Shauna that she don't take accountability for her own shit. I'm like, Carrie, you contradicting yourself because, child, you don't either. You don't either. Either she got issues or not. What she need to take accountability for is she ain't got no issues. But you saying that ain't what she said. That's exactly what she said. But Shauna tell her, little girl, you acting like your shit don't stink. Carrie had lied to them about Bryce. She lied to them, apparently. That was new to me. And now she wants them to be understanding and be on her team when everything fall apart. He played her again. And they, they, they were there to help pick up the pieces again. 
But then I sat here and thought about this whole conversation. All this stuff that they slinging at each other. These allegations. And when you did this and when you did that and this, that, and the third. So you mean to tell me that this friendship that y'all have, all this support that you guys have been giving one another has been fake? You supporting her? But you ain't really telling her the real deal about how you really feel. That's what Shauna did. That's what I saw. Shauna was quick to tell you how she really felt about the situation and still continue to support you. You, on the other hand, when y'all saw her smiling all up and do a face, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Remember, I said something. I was like, hey, y'all ain't worried about that? Y'all ain't gonna say something to your girl? I ain't like, dog, this is the wrong place in the wrong time. Both of y'all sitting there like, man, it ain't my circus, ain't my clowns. That's what both of y'all was like. At least Shauna was able to speak up to y'all and tell her, dog, something ain't right with this here. When it came with the Bridget and Matthew situation, when she realized what was going on, thank God I'm here. Thank God I showed up when I did. So, I don't get it. I'm, I'm Team Shauna right now. I'm Team Shauna. Anyway, I say, Carrie went on and shit on her about not having a place to stay and all this, then the third. You was just cheering her on about her having a man that will take care of her. And now, it's a thing. You ain't even got your own place. You ain't got your own job. Because she had a man that she was living with that was taking care of her. That you was just applauding and rah rah Cisco bombing for. And now, that's an issue. Them same things. You know? <laughs> Now she a hoe and ass bugaboo. That's what she is to you now. Now, uh, like I said, I was concerned about how Shauna was moving. Y'all seen me. I was like, why your girls ain't talking to you? Ain't nobody concerned about this. Ain't nobody stepping to Shauna saying, hey, dog, slow your roll. Ain't nobody doing that, right? I was concerned. Y'all was big quiet. Big quiet. You and Bridget, big quiet. At least Shauna did try to keep you alert about Bryce, okay? Even though she still allowed him to come into her home. And she, you knew she didn't want him there, okay? But anyway, you ain't gonna listen. Now your face cracked. <laughs> and you just being a busybody just like your mama. More than your mama, in my opinion. Anyway, we end with a horrible last montage. This is probably the worst scene I've seen of this web series. I love this web series. But this whole little montage of Bryce trying to call Carrie and she won't pick up the phone and he getting angry and he drinking more and more. It trying to make it seem like Carrie's um, separation from him is what's really bringing him down, what's really pushing him over the edge. Bryce had never stopped drinking. That's why she found all the liquor underneath the cabinet. He had never stopped drinking. He had never stopped being the man that he was. He was just pretending all this doggone time. Getting not only did he have a girl back home, he had a fiance, you know what I'm saying? He just was pretending this entire time. He was lying, a lying, low-life motherfucker. So how all of a sudden now he's spiraling out of control? No, sir. No, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Well, Carrie decides to go on with her life, you know. She put up the flyers for her little performance that she got to do. And as she walked past the little boutique, out comes Jared. They miss each other in passing. But Jared did see the flyer and took a picture of it. So, of course, he's going to attend. Now, if I was Jared, I'd say, fuck Carrie and feed the grapes. I asked you to go out on a date with me, and I ain't heard from you since. Like I said, where's Jared been? She wasn't still J dating Jared at the same time. She totally dismissed him because Bryce had walked back into her life. And now he see this flyer with her name on it. He's like, oh my God, it's Carrie. Bryce, I mean, Jared. Dude, come on now. Come on. That's it, y'all. I still didn't do both of these episodes together. You see how long I talk? <laughs> I haven't even watched the last episode. It's one more episode of Soul Ties and we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming, which is nothing. What am I doing? Tough Love web series. I'm going to start that soon this week. And you start seeing those videos come out. Um, 
I do still need to finish the last five episodes of Power Raising Canaan. So next week, not this week, next week it'll be a whole power play. You having um, those last five episodes drop all week long. Um, and I just did the last finale of The Handmaid's Tale the other day, yesterday. So check that out. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being here. See you in the next video. Peace.